everyone. Before we start the discussion, I just want to ask all of you, how are you? Please rate your current state on a scale of 1 to 10, the maximum scale at which you perform well is 10. The lowest which you perform poorly is 1. In the comment section or comment box, share your number scale. I just wanted to know how are you doing right now. So, I know currently right now, you are willing to acquire new knowledge. Let's start the discussion as most of you are interested in learning. For today's video, we're going to talk about the language policy of the Commission on Higher Education. So please listen carefully because I confidently know that you, are go that you are going to learn or acquire a multitude knowledge or learnings about it. So, let's jump to the focus of a topic. First, do you familiar with the Republic Act number 7722? Or it's also understood or known as Higher Education Act of 1994, which was enacted or legislated. It established the Commission on Higher Education, or CHED, which has a oversight over not just about in the public higher education institutions, but also in a private institution as well. And when the CHED established that um, degree, when the CHED established that Republic Act, um, that's the time that the CHED offers a degree granting curriculum throughout the post-secondary educational establishment, not just about in the public, but also in a private as well. It's so interesting that the CHED language policy, or the CMO 59, 1996, stayed in line with the bilingual education policy, which express index directive number 52. I know you are familiar with the bilingual education policy. Then afterward, after the Republic Act was enacted or legislated, when I said earlier, that's the time when Republic Act number 105 territory, it was passed, or it's often known as the K-12 law, and the succeeding or the subsequent Czech Memorandum Order number 20, series of 2013, in both which remove the study of Filipino, Panitikan, and the Philippine constitutions as core topics. Imagine, a lack of overlap between these subjects in grade 1 to grade 10 and also in senior high school and also in the college. So, it was reportedly that the goal of the adjustments made to the general education curriculum. A lot of people oppose the memorandum order. However, and believe that most of people, they said that it would harm the preservations of our Filipino language as a reminder of our national identity and togetherness. As a result, multiple petitions have been passed and filed with this Improve Court or the SC. And of course, with that petitions, it have a challenging various aspects or facets of aforementioned Ched order. So on October 9, 2018, the SCN Bank promulgated its decision on the consolidated petitions. In order, in order to support the constitutionality of the CMO 20 series of 2013, the Supreme Court pointed out three salient points. Number one, Ched under IRA 7722 has the right to determine the following. A. The minimum requirement unit of a specific academic program. Letter B. The general education re general education distribution requirement. And letter C. A specific professional a specific a specific professional subjects. Number two. Panitikan Filipino and Constitution are already in the basic education curricula. And number three. If the higher education institutions decides to do so. Now you know the three salient points that are being already explained by Mr. Vincent Stepa. Evidently, the Supreme Court decisions only interprets the law as it is, not as it ought to be. It's just, it just states the education that have the discretion to include the Filipino courses in their tertiary curricula or curriculum. Therefore, the Congress is have a free to remove that choice. 
In fact, it is easy for us to lose our sense of national identity in these days or because of the intense surveillance on the internet, social media, as well as the Filipinos love other countries, culture, languages, such as those countries in the United States, South Korea, and other foreign countries. In fact, our common language served as a hidden link that needed to unite us. It is the soul of our nations, our country. If it is valued and safeguarded, it will serve our legacy, not only in our generation we represent today, but also to those Filipino peoples who follow on us. To direct the Ched, it's needed to use of it to eliminate the practice of functions. This proposal developed in the conjunction with the CFO or the Commission Filipino Language, if you're familiar with that. They have a aims, which is to guarantee the inclusion of Filipino and Panitikar in our tertiary curricula, in our education here in our in our country, to make a description in our education. And the plan of the CFL it is to guarantee the advancement of Filipino of the Philippine languages. The CFL remind us that we needed to improve, spread, and preserve our Filipino language. In order to guide the CHED into the practice of its actions, this proposal seeks to include Filipino and Panitikan subjects in the college curriculum. An act of mandating CHED to include Filipino and Panitikan subjects into the tertiary education curricula, be it enacted by the Senate and the House of the Representatives of the Philippine Congress assembled. Section 1. This act shall be known as the inclusion of Filipino and Panitikan subjects into the College Curricula Act of 2019. Section 2. It is hereby declared the policy of the state to promote and ensure the evaluation, development, and further enrichment of Filipino language. Section 3. CHED shall ensure the inclusion of Filipino and Panitikan subjects into the College Curricula. It shall undertake further consultations with other national government agencies such as the PRC and the Commission on Filipino Language, stakeholders such as public and private schools associations, national students' organizations, national teachers' organizations, parent-teacher associations, and etc. Section 4. All laws presidential decrees, executive orders that are inconsistent with this act are hereby repealed or modified accordingly. Section 5. This act shall take effect after 15 days from its publication from the Philippine Gazette. For the conclusion, our topic mainly revolves under the CMO number 20 series of 2013 that seeks to the exclusion of Filipino and Panitikan as core subjects in the universities in order to avoid repetition of classes. The CHED defends this act by stating that it is not really removing the educational freedom of the universities and they can still include these two subjects in their curriculum. Despite this, however, many group of people such as the Tango Wika stated that this act is anti-Filipino and presented many petitions in the Supreme Court. In October 9, 2018, the Supreme Court and BAC promulgated its decision towards these petitions. In order to support the constitutionality of this act, the Supreme Court presented three salient points. Number one, the CHED under the RA 7722 has the right to declare and decide the minimum required unit for a specific academic program. Number two, Panitikan, Filipino, and Constitution subjects are already in the basic education curricula. And number three, if HEI decides to do so. It is quite clear that a group of people such as the CHED believes that the CMO number 20 series of 2013 does good things, while others such as the Tangulwika are anti to CMO number 20 series of 2013. But as a student, it is quite clear that we still need Filipino subjects in our curricula because there are things such as, for example, the short nang and the long nang that many people still are confused about. 
So it is quite clear for us that we still need Filipino and Filipino language still needs, uh, still needs us. And that's all for today. Thank you. And here are the references. And that's all. Thank you for watching everyone. Again, I am Captain S. Bon from BSE English 1B together with Mr. Vincent Stepa. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot from this discussion. Keep safe and God bless everyone.